I employ lots of different techniques, and that can be from discussing with them, from getting them to talk in groups, and just earwigging, sometimes listening to what they're talking to each other about. Drawing's really important when you haven't got vast amounts of time to teach science and you want them to get ideas down very quickly. Lots of little sketches with annotations and things works really well for some children. And I like old-fashioned exercise books to keep ideas in because just like, you know, a scientist would keep a notebook of their ideas, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to show what they've done. It very much depends on what subject we're looking at, but um, in science we've done lots of different types of assessment, so writing instructions if we're creating a, an experiment, or if, when we were looking at the water cycle to do a presentation in small groups using their PowerPoint, so they were verbalising all that they'd learnt and trying to use the right, correct terms, um, so we could assess not only what they'd learnt, but also how much of that they could portray to other people. The best thing I find is actually not explaining to me what they do, it's please talk to, you, talk to the person sitting next to you, explain what you've learned today, explain how you know this is happening and you go and listen to these conversations. OK, with the lights we always have them on, but we could probably turn them off a lot more because we don't actually need them during the day. What should we do about the windows? That's the best way of assessment, really, is listening to what they need to say. Presenting, definitely. Whether we do it as a sort of interview or hot seating or, you know, standing up with a PowerPoint doing a more formal presentation, they like, most of my children like to be centre stage, so they really relish that opportunity. And it's more interesting to them than writing every day, which is something they get a bit tired of. He's a bit there. You breathe in, you see it goes there, and when you breathe out, it flattens again. That's called your diaphragm. So if you breathe in, it goes in, in, in yeah, and you breathe out, it flattens, it goes out. Asking what the children most enjoy in the way of assessment is very difficult to, to answer because some will love showing off what they, they know in, in public, others will be perfectly happy to speak to you on a one-to-one -one basis but, you know, wouldn't want you to stand them in front of a class and demonstrate it in another way. Mathematical children love graphs, others hate them with a vengeance and I think you just have to be very aware of that as a teacher, gathering lots of different ways of doing it. I think as far as I'm concerned, there is only one thing that matters, and that is about seeing how children's learning has progressed. And the best way to do that is to get a child to say to you, I used to think this, and now I think that. And the reason I've changed my mind is because. Or possibly even I used to think this and I still think this, but now I know why, and it's because. The size makes a bigger crater. It just drops them like straight, then it will make a deep hole. If you've got children doing that, they've told you what they've learnt. And you can ask children to tell you what they've learnt, and by doing that, you'll hear the things, you know, what level they're at. Some will have learnt some simpler things, some will have learnt more complicated things, but they will tell you, and that is what matters.